And with that, let's rock and roll. I want to talk to you about something that you may have suspected was true, but you weren't absolutely sure. You're under the influence. That is, you, me, everyone. There's a wee bit of thistle and heather in all of us. The cop with the radar, yep, that's a Scottish invention. The belly, ah, that's probably British. But right off the bat, <laughs> let's get one thing straight. When we're talking about our shared, sometimes weird heritage, whether you dream to dream or whether you're busy tracking down Dr. No, we refer to it as Scottish, not Scotch. Scotch is indeed good, but that will come later. In everyday life, the influence started a long time ago with the discoveries of many brilliant Scottish scientists like Fleming and Maxwell and Bell, and continues to these modern times. Anesthesia, radio, shortbread, marmalade, a fair genius. And who but the Scots would clone a sheep, if you know what I mean, lad. <laughs> and we eagerly embrace plenty of culture derived from Scotland, from delicate dance to philosophy to rock. I bet you old ABC racing fans can't forget Jackie Stewart with Chrissy Konomaki providing color to the car races of the 60s. Oh, hi, Chris. This is looking to be a great, great auto race. Anyone? Anyone? But admittedly, some of the culture may be best left to the other side of the Atlantic. Large, grown men in skirts, wearing no underwear, throwing large, heavy objects. Someone is bound to get hurt, or at least pull a muscle, or a sheep stomach filled with ground-up pieces of God knows what. That, my friends, is haggis. <laughs> the correct time to talk about scotch is when you're about to sip a wee dram of single malt whiskey. If you've ever been to the produce section of a Scottish grocery store, typically one small cardboard box, you know that this is Scotland's greatest contribution to a balanced diet. <laughs> the pile of books suggests it contributes to knowledge, too, but while we're drinking, now might be the time to talk about iconic Scottish menswear. And yes, lassies wear them too, but while the heavy wool kilt and clan tartan is certainly the centerpiece of tradition, the accoutrements from flashy sporns to shiny ghillie brogues complete the package. My tartan is Macintosh. <laughs> Don't get ahead of me here. This would not be a complete discussion without the inevitable question, what does a fellow wear underneath his kilt? Woo! And this has been the subject of intense speculation for generations. But how to solve? And what about the cold weather? Naturally, given that the Scots are the creators of so many scientific innovations, the logical thing to do would be to take a proper survey. Now we know, if you're a peaker, your odds of getting a good jolt are at about 38%. <laughs> and yes, every time I wear my kilt, I get the question, Missy O'Malley saw me getting dressed, you can ask her. And of course, our heritage includes the pipes. The pipes provide a mesmerizing way to bring people to tears, to pay tribute to loved ones, and to clear out a party faster than the Bay City Rollers. <laughs> Cousin Darren shows the healthy respect that native-born Scots have for their treasured music. Rumor has it that the Irish gave the Scots the bagpipes and they still haven't got the jokes. Now ask a Scot why they are so cheap, and he's likely to say, oh, simply due to the fact that, uh, broadly speaking, we are. Scottish thrifty thriftiness is certainly embedded in our own culture. Consider how many of us were raised with Scotch guard, Scotch tape, and Scrooge McDuck. If you're of a certain age, you'll remember how Safeway took this to a whole new level with their short-lived Scotch Buy brand, with the tagline, it ain't fancy, but it sure is good. <laughs> and on the cigarettes, Good quality, thrifty value. Note, not great, just good. That is so Scottish. <laughs> now, Mike Myers, a good Canadian, by the way, introduced us to a variety of Scottish accented characters, from Shrek to Fat Bastard to the all-things Scottish guy on SNL. So how can you learn to say, if it's not Scottish, it's crap? Well, here's a tip. Pretend you are your favorite Scottish actor and talk like you think they would talk. I prefer the always excitable Mr. Scott from Star Trek. Oh, Captain, we'll surely blow the reactors. Or Tim the Enchanter from the Holy Grail. Oh, I, I'll help you find your grail. <laughs> or perhaps even Sean Connery. Uh, tell Goldfinger I'm still looking for pussy galore. <laughs> Now, combine your practice accent with a working knowledge of some choice words, and you're a party hit. I suggest you start with my own primary source of linguistic savvy, the Scottish souvenir dish towel. I often use common words like, 
I can have fitness bonnie kilt. It's got a wee bit of a waistline. Handy, eh? Like any language, Scottish slang is filled with subtlety. Some words are familiar, some are very strange and hard to figure out their origin. For example, pure, dead, brilliant, exceptionally good. And what appears to be an insult can in fact be friends exchanging greetings, such as, all right, you wee bob bag, means how are you doing? Bah, but rearrange the words, drop the all right aspect, and just say, ha, you, ya bob bag, and you would mean, excuse me, I dislike you very much. And did you know, do not teach a guy to suck eggs means don't try to teach someone something they already know. <laughs> you probably already know that the Scots are an ancient, proud, and independent-minded people, as illustrated by Mel Gibson about to wield an old-fashioned kind of lethal weapon. I went there. But did you know that Scotland is the birthplace of modern geology, golf, Halloween, Annie Lennox, the first two prime ministers of Canada, and deep-fried Mars bars? Well... Clearly, one PK is not enough to probe the depths of our Hebridean heritage. Stand back, look around, and from refrigerators to redheads, unicorns to Peter Pan, you'll find the Scottish influence is everywhere. Next time you pick up the phone, use some sticky tape, ingest some antibiotics, or put on your Argyle sweater, remember, that's your Scottish heritage shining through. So we'll leave on a mercifully windless day where the, the Scottish toasts are flying, including the traditional lang may your lum reek, which means may you live long and stay prosperous, but literally, long may your chimney smoke. And if you see me around town, be sure to yell, all right, ya wee ball bag. <laughs>